everyone, I'm LC Gamer, and welcome back to the Nunnery Games. This is Triple Nine, and we're, we just left the library, and now we're in the study, which is a mess. And we're going to have to do a lot of searching through here. Uh, okay. We have south, west, Southeast, Northeast, East, North, and West. Uh, let me write that down. Alright, I have it written down, so I'll grab this and take it with me. Uh, let's see here. It looks like the same type of mechanic that was in the captain's steering area. The wheel room. Alright, let's see. Alright. They wrote down those instructions. It's gonna be... South. Then West. Southeast. Then Northeast. Then east, north, and east again. Come on. There we go. You won a prize. All right. I will be taking the metal now. Come on. Alright, enough out of you two. I want to get out of this room as quickly as possible. A helm emblem. I gotcha. Uh, what do we have here? Alright, let's open it. Hey, <laughs> All ice. Um, okay. Yeah, he. I think he thinks the same. Uh. Please don't let anything be in there. Uh. All right. This is serious. Well, let's just open and find out. <sighs> well, okay. See ya, Alice. Alice. What do we have here? Oh, this. Um, what is this? Um, uh, eh, that's what I'm trying to take a look at. It's this one. This puzzle. Gotcha. Oh. 
Okay. I need to get rid of a few things and bring in a few things. Gotcha. Let's take a look at this. Okay. Uh, it's two of them. Hey! That was fast. No, that was just lucky. Because I had no idea what I was doing. Okay, uh, let's get a move on. Cross emblem, check. Uh, what do we have here? Uh, piece of paper, three sheets. Oh, okay. And this is Morse code. Great. <sighs> well. Alright. Let's see. The first line, there's four. Two dots in the first line, four on the second, one on the last. So, I need... thing I think of that makes sense, because the coffin over there is ice. Convenient information. All right. Neat breath. Open it. Ah, nothing in there. Great. No curse the mummy here. No mummy bandages that are going to come to life and eat people. Or... Dracula. Cool. With the Neptune key, and the last metal. Alright. Now there's only one thing left to find. And that's the key. What do we have here? Oh, joy. Well, let's see if this works. It did. Alright. Um... I hate this puzzle. Just from looking at it, I can tell I hate it. Alright. Alright. Oh, well, let me take a crack at it. Take the five out. There we go. Next, we need this one. Oh, 
There goes nothing. over here. Okay. Lucky me. Next. The puzzles just keep getting harder, don't they? Alright, alright. Let's continue on. Enough with the rambling. Seven seven. Okay, two six. say I had to put them all onto one side. Had to put them into both sides. Now did it? In that case, I'm just gonna put everything onto one side. Alright. And now, time for a lengthy cutscene. A picture? What the? What the hell is this? This man with a mustache on the right. He's the same guy we found murdered in the captain's quarters. He had the zero bracelet on his left arm. And the second man with the glasses and a doctor's coat. He's the ninth man. The one with bracelet number nine. He died after he went into door five. But this guy, the one in the striped suit, Man, that's Ace. Yeah, I guess it is. No doubt about it. But what does it mean? What is Ace doing in this picture? Not only Ace, the ninth man and Cap, too. And they look happy, like they knew each other well. Why? How? How in the world are these four men connected? You say Ace is in that picture? Yeah, it doesn't look like it was taken recently, though. Ace, the Ninth Man, and Cap all look about ten years younger. Ah, so the Ninth Man and the man you found murdered in the Captain's quarters are also in the picture? Yes. Yeah. Is there anyone else? Or are there only three people in the picture? No, there's one more guy. He's got kinda long hair, he looks smart, but a little cold. He's the only one I don't recognize. Hmm. What's the date of the photograph? It doesn't have one. Did you look on the back? The back? Yes, the reverse. The other side. Huh. Praying for the success of the Nonary Project. With Nijisaki, Kubota, and Musashido. Huh. Then the four men in this picture were the organizers of the Nonary Game 9. That means Ace, the Ninth Man, and Cap were all responsible for making it happen. Uh-huh. You're but, dead on. But what happened? I feel like I should be more shocked about this. It's almost as if that's just how things were always supposed to be. Why? Why am I not surprised? Ace was the one in charge of the Nonary Project. But then why? Why am I so calm? It's like I already knew. 
Ah, of course. Ian Ace was the CEO of Cradle Pharmaceuticals. He was the one who invented the game nine years ago. He was Gintaro Hongo. Ace is... Hongo? I had my suspicions from the beginning. Their voices were similar. Too similar to be a coincidence. I could never forget his voice. It was the voice of the devil. I couldn't be sure, though. After all, I had no way to check. I certainly couldn't ask him. Even if I had known, however, I would never have told you. Zero made it quite clear what would have happened if I did. Oh my gosh, I had no idea. Huh? I didn't know that Ace was Hongo. Oh, yes. I suppose you wouldn't have. Nine years ago, you were in Building Q in Nevada, but Hongo was in the Gigantic with us. I know. That's why I didn't know what Hongo looked like. But why? Why didn't you tell me? I mean, I'm your sister, right? You could have told me. I'm sorry. I apologize for keeping this from you. But if I'd told you, Clover, you would have told everyone else. And if you did, then I would have been forced to tell them about what happened nine years ago. I had to prevent that. <sighs> hey, Junpei. You think I could borrow that picture for a sec? Sure. Hmm. Hongo Kubota. Nichisaki Musashido. Hongo Kubota. Hongo Kubota. Hey, Seven, do you... Shut it! Just... just be quiet. Okay, no reason to snap. I'm this close to remembering. This close. Hongo Kubota Nichisaki Cradle Pharmaceuticals. Nonary Project. Mm-hmm. Is it coming back yet? <gasps> shit. What? What's wrong? Holy shit, this is nuts. Um, what's nuts? I remember... Remember what? Everything. Everything? Yeah, yeah, I, I remember all of it. My memory's back. I, I remember what happened before I got snatched. What? Uh. <sighs> Let me tell you what happened. Like Snake said, Ace is Hongo from the right. The other three are Musashido, Mijisaki, and Kubota. Musashido was the man with the cash. Nijisaki was Hongo's right-hand man. And Kubota developed the actual technical details of the experiments. How do you know all this? Come on, man, I told you, I finally got my memory back. No, that's not what I mean. I'm trying to ask you why you knew all this stuff in the first place, before you forgot it. <laughs> you really want to know? Of course. Me too. Hmm. This is gonna take a while. Hell, it'll probably take me a good three days to tell you everything. Well, make it the short version. Well, we don't have three days. Just give us the short version, all right? Short version, huh? All right, fine. I'll give it a shot. No promises, though. I'm a detective. It's a little awkward to say this about myself, but you could probably consider me a lone wolf type. Okay. And? I hold to my own code, as I think doing what's right is more important than doing what you're told. <coughs> That's why I followed my gut that night. A slim lead brought me to the wharf. It was nine years ago. The wharf had been cold as fuck, and I could barely see squat. I was investigating a mess of kidnappings, all of them children. It all had one thing in common. A history of visits to one particular hospital. A hospital under the management of Cradle Pharmaceuticals. And my investigation had turned up evidence that Cradle had been involved in the kidnappings. After a little sweet talking, I managed to finally get a real lead from someone inside Cradle. My source told me this. Tonight, a ship is set to take the children to a large passenger liner docked offshore. So I headed to the wharf. From the shadows, I searched the harbor until I found the ship he was talking about. There was a bunch of movement near it. Men in black suits, many of them were carrying large bags. The bags. There was something about the way they moved, as there was no doubt about it. There were human beings in those bags. I moved before I realized it. I came out of hiding, with my gun already in my hand. Don't move! I felt metal touch the back of my head. Drop the gun. I could kill you right now. It'd be easy to get away with it, too. Just tie an anchor to your feet, and no one will find you for a week. That what you want? The fish here would love a meal. He kept digging the cold metal thing into my skull. <sighs> there was nothing I could do. I did what he said and laid my gun on the ground. Then suddenly, I 
was a sharp pain in my neck. A drug? That was my last thought. My face hit cold concrete. I was out like a light after that. <clears throat> I woke up on a hard floor. Damn it. Shit, my head hurts. I did a quick once over of the room. Where am I? A small, shabby bed, a dirty sink, a toilet with no privacy. I'd seen it countless times as a cop. I'm in a cell, huh? Facing the toilet was a door set into the wall. I was still pretty woozy, but I made my way over to it. I pushed and pulled on it, but... <clears throat> it won't open. Not like I expected much else. It would be dumb enough to put me in a cell and leave it unlocked. Threw myself against the door a few times, but it wouldn't budge. I knew it. I gave up and made my way back to the bed, and sat down. Hmm. Huh. I sat there for a very, very long time. <laughs> Who knows how long. Then, I heard a faint voice. The voice was far away. I couldn't understand what it was saying. Okay, I'm gonna skip a bit of this. Because we already know what's gonna happen. I'm just gonna search the room, find the uh, vent, pull the vent cover off, climb through. Come on. The first bit or so was tight. I had a wriggle on my belly. It wind up eventually, and there was space for me to crawl along on my hands and knees. I went from crawling like a worm in dirt to skittering like a bug. Couldn't say it was much better, but I'd take what I could get. And when I'd been in the thing long enough to start wondering where it'd take me... A massive sound nearly scared the piss out of me. It was like a heavy metal door had just been slammed shut. Then, there was a voice. Oh, that's not good. What? I wasn't sure what it meant, but anything with incinerator is bad news. Then, almost as if that was a cue, I heard a mess of young sounding voices. A bunch of them were straight up screaming in terror. You know? Well, let's Damn it. get up. What the hell is going on here? This story moving. I scrambled through the duct as fast as I could. I made a giant racket, but I didn't care at that point. I soon found a metal door on the left side of the duct. The kids were screaming on the other side. I found it. I yanked the handle and threw the door open. I almost ripped the metal off its hinges. What the... What the hell is this place? I couldn't believe what I saw. The room had a dome up top, and there had to be about nine walls, all the same size. Up in the ceiling was an upside-down funnel. Almost like a chimney. I looked down. Well, what'd you see? There they were. The kids I'd been searching for. They all gawked up at me, suddenly silent. For the moment, <gasps> scared of the room or me, I couldn't tell. Probably both, actually. <laughs> Not like I can blame them running into a mug like this when they're already scared shitless. I snorted at my own dig at myself and turned to the kids. Don't worry, kids. I'm not your enemy. I'm one of the good guys. All of them stood there, frozen. Well, except one. He was a boy slightly older than the others in a private school uniform. Who the hell are you? He stepped forward and glared at me suspiciously. I'm a detective. I'm here to rescue you. It looked like they relaxed some the second I got the words out. How are you going to help us? Where's the exit? There isn't one. The doors we came in through won't open, and the door over there... He kind of cut himself off. I think he was considering something before he changed his mind. Anyway, there's no point. We can't all get out of here. If we don't get out of here, we're going to be burned to death. Burned to death? Can't you hear it? That voice said the incinerator's going to start up soon. So, so... <laughs> The voice spoke again. Incineration will begin in 15 minutes. They only had 15 minutes. I looked back down at the kids. Looks like a good 20 or 30 feet to the floor. No way I could pull them up. Too big of a distance for any of us to reach. What the hell was I going to do? But then I got an idea. Wait right there. I'm going to be right back. What? Where, where 
is he going? Are, are you just going to leave us here? They just got frightened again. I'm not the best at that kind of thing, but I try to reassure them with a smile. Don't worry, all right? I'll be back, I promise. So just stay calm and wait right there. Got it? I didn't wait to hear them respond. There wasn't time. I had to hurry. Well, as fast as a guy could on his hands and knees. Didn't take me long to get back to my cell. Still no way out of there, but I had a plan. I needed something from the room. When I got it, I dove back into the hole and took off towards the incinerator. Then... Sorry to keep you waiting, guys. I tipped out the doorway and dropped down the rope I brought with me. Back in the cell, I'd torn the bed sheets into strips and tied them together to make a rope. It was sloppy, but it got the job done. All right, just tie that around yourself, okay? I'll pull you up one at a time. Right. Huh. Wait a sec. Something was off. There were more of you before. Where'd the rest of you go? The boy in the uniform answered. I let them go on ahead. We opened the number nine door and they left. What? You're telling me you opened that door? That's what I said. Then what the hell are you doing here? We couldn't go with them. Why not? Look, the only people who can go through the numbered door... He was in the middle of explaining when... Incineration will begin in five. The wall shook a bit from the voice bouncing around. Look, that can wait, all right? Just get us out of here! Uh, right! I grabbed onto the rope. The first one I pulled up was a girl with a ponytail. Next was a girl with a red necktie. A boy in a jacket came after. He said he'd climb up on his own. The boy in the uniform was the last up. Like the other kid, he climbed up the rope himself. He looked pretty scrawny, but I guess he was stronger than he looked. He moved fast, but when he was almost to me, we heard some knocking. Everyone looked at the door. It had a thick, square window set into it. On the other side, an angry face was staring in. God damn it! What's going on here? Why is the room empty? Where the hell are those fucking kids? Mongo? The door opened, and a man stepped in looking half mad with fury. I recognized his face. I saw him many times in photos during my investigation. The man's name was Gintaru Hongo, the CEO of Cradle Pharmaceuticals. Ongo saw the boy hanging from the rope. Yeah! It was like he was an animal. He lunged for the rope. Hurry! I know! The boy in the uniform booked it up the rope. You son of a bitch! Get back here, you little shit! Fifteen feet. Ten. The second I could reach the kid, I grabbed him. I hauled him up and tossed him into the duck behind me. No! No! Hongo had lost it. His face didn't even look human. It was like the bastard pulled off his fake face. He was really a terrifying devil or some kind of damn monster. I quickly reeled in the rope, leaving a furious Hongo yelling at me from the floor. You fucking bastard! You won't get away with this! How dare you compromise this experiment! Experiment? What experiment? <laughs> Incineration will begin in one minute. Hey, old man! What the hell are you doing? Hurry up! The boy in the uniform was trying to get my attention. I may have thrown a salute in a raging asshole's face before I closed the door behind me. No point to going back to the cell, so we went down the other direction instead. After about 30 feet, we came across another duct on the left. This one was heading down. Everybody nodded and took turns sliding down it. The duct emptied us out into a narrow hallway. There was a door on either side. The one on the left was a normal double door. But the one on the right was familiar. It had black and yellow stripes and a device next to it on the wall. A plate on it read, Incinerator. Yep. Incinerator? Yeah, that's where we were. It was the girl with the red tie who answered me. We were inside an incinerator? Yeah, Hongo might still be there. It looks like it's been shut off, though. Wait, what? If he's still in there... Yeah, that's not good. Uh, that meant we better... We gotta get out of here. Go to the other door. Hurry! The kids started running, and I was close on their heels. On the other side of the door was a large spiral staircase. Run! Didn't need to tell them twice. We went up and 
up and up, feet pounding the steps, our arms pumping fast. We went round and round and round, the devil was on our tail. <sighs> the stairway kept going. We passed a couple of landings when the boy in the uniform suddenly spoke. <sighs> Something's up. Akane's not catching up to us. Akane? My kid sister. The girl with the red necktie. Akane. Akane. That's strange. I didn't remember seeing that name in the list of missing kids. Hey! Akane! He kept his hands around his mouth and yelled. <laughs> Maybe we outran her. The boy in the uniform skidded to a stop. I stopped too. And so did the other two kids. When did we do that? Well, we passed a couple big rooms on the way here. Maybe she took a rest in one of them? No, that's impossible. Sorry, Grandpa. You keep going. I gotta go look for her downstairs. He turned to go. Hey, kid, wait! God damn it, I said wait! I don't think the kid even heard me. Fuck! I spun around to the boy in the jacket and the girl with the ponytail. I'm going after him. You two keep going, all right? You got it? The girl nodded and ran up the stairs. But the boy... I'm going with you. <clears throat> I didn't have time to argue. I just nodded and took off down the stairs. I could hear him following me. We ran all the way to the bottom floor, calling for her. Akane was nowhere to be found. God damn it, where the hell did she go? I could tell the kid was frustrated. And then suddenly... Help me! Somebody help me! We heard a girl's voice. Akane! The boy in the uniform threw open the door and leapt into the hallway by the incinerator. We rushed in after him. I couldn't for the life of me believe what we were seeing. That bastard Hongo had Akane by the arm and was forcing her into the incinerator. Come on, goddammit, move! No, I don't want to! Let me go, please! Let go of me! She planted her feet squarely on the floor and was struggling to get away. But Hongo was bigger and stronger. She wasn't gonna win. <sighs> Akane! My brother roared with anger and charged toward Hongo. Help me! Ah! You're too late, idiot! Hongo lifted Akane bodily into the air and threw her, still fighting him, into the incinerator. Ah! Before we could even blink, Hongo had leapt through the door after her. We saw him land inside. And then, the door slammed shut. We ran to the door. We did everything we could think of to get the thing open, but... Ah! Fuck! It's no use! The goddamn thing won't move an inch! He started slamming his fists against the door. He was close to shattering his knuckles with how hard he pounded on it. Akane! Akane! Are you okay? You came back! Her voice was muffled. But all of us could hear the sheer terror in it. What did I do? I, I think I'm trapped in here. Where's Hongo? He went out the other door. W what? Warning. Warning. Emergency incineration command has been acknowledged. Automatic incineration will take place in 18 minutes. Please evacuate the incinerator immediately. Repeat. Emergency incineration command has been acknowledged. Are you fucking kidding me? It's the same damn thing! Are you there? Yeah, we're here. Just hang on, all right? We're gonna figure out a way to save you. I'm not sure you can. His words would have seemed like a sick joke to her if she'd been able to see how white and bloodless his face was right then. Incineration will begin in 17 minutes. Figure something out, I promise. I promise, okay? You hear me? I promise! It was torture listening to her sobbing on the other side of the door. Her brother was nearly crying himself. He could only stand there. Fists clenched so tight his knuckles were white. <sighs> uh, what happened then? Come on, man. Put yourself in my shoes. It doesn't end good. You think I want to remember that? Then... Well, obviously... 
something didn't go the way planned. Yeah. Shit. If I'd known it was gonna be like this, I almost wish I hadn't remembered. Hey, um, are you... are you sure? Huh? Look, I don't want to ask this either, but there's... there's something I don't get. Hmm. So if you could just tell me, did that girl, Akane, really... Yeah, I'm sure. There wasn't anything we could do. After a while, the countdown ended, and we heard something... burning. We... The fire stopped, but we still didn't move. Me and the jacket kid were frozen. The boy in the uniform collapsed as if he couldn't hold himself up anymore. A few minutes passed. The door opened. The boy in the uniform tripped over his own feet running in. We followed, too numb to speak. The air in the incinerator was hot. Every breath made my lungs feel like they were on fire. It was like standing on hot asphalt. The air was wavering, and, and in the middle of the room, there it lay. The kid's legs were shaking so bad, I don't know how he managed to walk. I couldn't see his face, but his body somehow looked empty. Finally, he reached it. He fell to his knees as his legs gave out on him. And then... Um, um, uh, can I ask you one more thing? What's that? The girl, Akane. What was her last name? What does it matter to you? Just, just tell me, okay? Please? Kurashiki. Her name was Akane Kurashiki. <laughs> you were there that day, weren't you? The tall kid in the jacket. That was you, wasn't it? Yes, it was. You are correct, Detective. Don't misunderstand me. I told you before how Zero threatened me. There was nothing I could do. I couldn't say anything about what happened nine years ago. So you're saying you're not working for Zero, right? Of course not. Clover, what about you? Hey, come on! You really think I'm working with Zero? I told you before, you idiot! I was in Nevada, in Building Q. I did hear that a detective rescued the kids on the boat, but I didn't know it was you. <laughs> well, I guess I believe you. All right, let me ask you another question. Santa's real name is Aoi Kurashiki. He's Akane's brother. You know that? No! No, I didn't. Did you? Well, yes. I know Aoi Kurashiki was her brother, but I didn't know he was Santa. At least not from the beginning. Nine years ago, he was in the middle of puberty. His voice is entirely different now. I'm ashamed to say that even my exceptional hearing wasn't able to make that connection. As such, I had no reason to think Santa was Aoi. When did you figure it out? Clover told me that Santa might have been one of the subjects of the initial experiment. It was only a short while ago, while we were leaving the library. When she told me that, I had a... feeling. Santa is Aoi? Akane Kurashiki, June's brother? There's still a lot we don't know. I mean, like, a lot, a lot. But there is one thing I think we can say we know. What's that? The body we found in the shower room. It had to be Nijisaki, dressed up to look like Snake. What? Come on, man, what kind of detective are you? You didn't figure that out already? Hey, go easy on me, man. I just got my memory back, all right? Cut me some slack. Hmm. Well, if he is, the three murders make sense then, don't they? Yeah, that's right. Murder. Kubota blew himself up, but that was murder too. So why did these murders take place? If Junpei is correct, and the body in the shower room was Nijisaki's, that means all of the people who were murdered were involved with the creation of the Nonary Project. Kubota, the person who conducted the actual experiments. Nijisaki, Hongo's assistant. Musashido, the man who financed the project. You mean this was all just revenge? Partially. Santa is zero. He's getting revenge for the death of his sister. 
That's why he killed them. No, I, I don't think Santa actually murdered anyone. If I'm right, then it's not hard to figure out who the next victim's gonna be, is it? I'm pretty sure I don't have to tell you. Yes. Yep. Right. The next target will be Gintaro Hongo. The person who planned the Nonary Project. In other words, Ace. What? And now the ship is shaking. Whoa, what the hell's going on here? It must be 6 a.m. Our time is up. Shit! Come on, we need to get out of here. How? I'm betting this sucker opens the exit. Come on, let's go. Okay. The zero key card. Let's get out of here. But, before I go through the door, I'm going to leave it here because I'm out of time. So, for now, I'll see you guys in the next video. So, until then, see you guys.